Okay, so it's top of the morning. I um, I'm just on my first coffee and I'm doing a little bit of work, um, which you know, <laughs> it is what it is, right? I we stayed up late. I think it was like one o'clock in the morning or something like that. And yeah, it's just the struggle is real. But anyway, so I'm gonna need more coffee than this. Someone had asked, um, I got a lot of uh, country questions, like, you know, thoughts about Haiti, this one's thoughts about uh, North and South Korea. Someone has said, I'll oh, be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Someone asked, hey, Hirsch, wanted to know your opinions about North Korea. Uh, do you think that North and South Korea will join together? I know that you said that your wife was born in South Korea. Has she ever went back to visit? Will she ever live there? Uh, what are your thoughts overall about uh, North Korea and its uh, military and nuclear, op the, I guess they said options, but capability. Um, this person goes on to say, you know, my concerns about North Korea is that they uh, pretend that they are just a normal society, uh, but everything is uh, fake. The cities aren't real. People don't live in the, the buildings that they claim and they don't have access to freedom. Uh, they pretend to really love their leader. What are your overall thoughts? They go on in there and they mention something about, sorry, this eye is red. I think allergies are acting up here, but anyway. They go on to mention military and should the U.S. do something about it and blah, 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 blah. Here's, has, this has always been my thought, right? Is the U.S. should not get involved in other countries' business. Period. We should not. It used to be they would say that, you know, the U.S. has to protect its interests and so it goes into these other countries and blah, 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 blah. That's just bull. It's bull. Um, because if that were true, countries like China, which is pretty much close to spanking us when it comes to uh, GDP and all of this, and, you know, they are when it comes to GDP, but just in general, China, other countries that hardly ever go into war, they have a lot of interests all over the world, and you don't see that are possibly threatened. And you don't see them actually actually going into battle. They just don't do that. Now, would China one day beef itself up so big to where it will try to do that? Maybe I don't know, but it, it just doesn't. It doesn't do that. There are other countries that don't really do that. the 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 problem with this country is this one this one viewpoint, and that is you got to think like me. Believe like I do, uh, see things the way that I do. And if you don't, then there's a problem. And that has been kind of the way it has always been, even if we oppress our own. Because America has its own oppression. Because, you know, you're talking about oppression. America has its own. It doesn't want to talk about it, but it does. And so I think for the U.S., if we can't fix our own issues then we shouldn't be telling other people where their faults are and what they need to fix and this, that, and the other. It's none of our business, quite honestly. It's none of our business. Wars and stuff like that that have been fought in the past have typically been fought over stupid stuff. And not all, but but many of them. And so it it, it, it creates more problems a lot of times than not. When you think about the number of people who lose their lives, who have, are just trying to live every day, and then you think of all the soldiers that have to lose, that end up losing their lives, or they get physically scarred, mentally scarred, and then we end up leaving a place and nothing's really fixed. We just, we're a placeholder in time. We leave and then things go back to the way they were. It's just, it's pointless. This goes back to what I said about Haiti. There's no point in sending people military to Haiti to stabilize Haiti. That's not our problem. That's Haiti's problem. Haiti needs to figure its own self out and stabilize itself. They've gotten, Haiti has received a ton of aid 
that should have been used for that, but it hasn't. And so that's Haiti's concern. That's what they need to work on before any help should be given whatsoever, in my opinion. I think the same thing goes for a lot of different things, but trying to interject ourselves into another country's business is not a good play, in my opinion. I think it's it's stupid. The amount of money that we've spent on the Iraq war, or just, just for it as an, as an example, imagine what that would do to our economy. I mean, when you look at all the things, the stimulus and everything that people got, which would have been nice, but that people got and all of that, imagine what that's done to our country and the similar amount of money was spent in, in Iraq, I think, versus that. Look at what that's done for our economy. You know what I mean? Like it's done, it's done great. Imagine if we spent that on roads or hospitals or internet, better internet access for people. There's a lot of people in rural areas that don't have good access to internet. There's some people who live on dirt roads still. We could use the money that we've spent in other places trying to tell people to be like us, do what we do, assimilate to be American, even though you're in another country. If we just focused on ourselves and spent money on ourselves as opposed to trying to police everybody else and their opinions and thoughts and views, then people that live on dirt roads or people that have bad water because the water system has been upgraded or it's been tainted or you have old lead pipes, there's so many different issues that we have. Bad education system in many different areas. Our, our, our uh, kids are going to schools that aren't really that great. Community centers, some of them are shut down. There's brownfields all over the country. We could spend money on that. Not going to another country and telling them you have to have the same religious beliefs that we do. Depend upon who's in office here. You have to have the same ideals and, and thought processes that that party thinks. All of this stuff. That's generally what it amounts to. And resources. If you have these amount of resources, we got to make sure we protect you no matter what you do to your own people. So in a way, we support some of the things that we work against. You see what I'm saying? Like, so to me personally, it doesn't make any sense. Now, do I think, am I trying to book a trip to North Korea anytime soon? Absolutely not. Do I think the people in North Korea are free? No. To a larger degree, there's a lot of things here I can say that I don't feel very comfortable about. I don't feel comfortable driving down the road and there's a police officer nearby. There are certain parts of the country where you could just be minding your own business and I try to do something to you. So there's there's a lot of things that doesn't necessarily make our society super safe and super this, that, and the other and all of that. You have a lot of division in this country of where people want to do harm to you just because you may look different, because you may have different beliefs than they may have. There's a lot of things. You have a lot of people who think that you are less than because that's the way that they're raised. So before we start to preach to other people about, you know, their freedom and freedom of the press and this, that, and the other, to be honest with you, and, and I think that the press should be free. Freedom of the press should be able to report on whatever. However, the press has also made a lot of people look worse than what they are. The press has also done some pretty shisty stuff itself in this country. So I can't really sit there in good faith and point fingers at a place I've never been to. And most of us have never been to and talk about them and say, well, they're horrible. Now I can take some of the people who have lived there and have left and did all of that. And they're in some other country. I can take their words for what they're saying and their experiences. Cool. But as far as anybody in America that's never even lived there, never even visited, it's like, mm, I don't really take that as truth. I've been to places where the media has talked about it negatively. Heck, I even live in a city where the media has talked about it negatively to make people believe that it's such a scary, scary place. And yeah, do we have our share of crime in Tacoma? Absolutely. But it's not what you think. 
Haiti, going back on that topic, when I went to Haiti, it didn't have a president at the time. It's prior to Moise being uh, uh, in office. I think he may have been elected, but he wasn't in office. So it was right after, uh, the I think it's where Tally was the guy prior. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was in that, that window between the two. And all these little things on my phone from the U.S. government was saying it's super scary there. Be careful of this and that and this and that's happening. There's riots and pillage on the street. You've had people in the media saying how horrible things were. And when I got there, you didn't really notice. I didn't notice that. And went to Loganov Island. There's like a completely different country. Very peaceful. You know, it's just very quiet. It's way different. Most of the rest of the country is kind of like that too. And then coming back to the mainland, going into Port-au-Prince, I didn't see anything. All I saw were people at markets. I saw people driving super fast and crazy, but I didn't see any of that. Not saying it didn't exist, but the way that the media was portraying it was like, <sighs> everywhere you go, it's horrible. And that's just not the case. It's overblown, overplayed. Some of the stuff in North Korea that they want you to believe, I believe is way overplayed. I just do. You know, like for example, they talk about, you mentioned the homes and stuff are, you know, uh, fake homes and this, that, and the other. Maybe, I don't know. And who cares? <laughs> Hold on. That could be a bird or something. We have birds at our fountain that sets off the sensor. But, um, you know, who cares? You see what I'm saying? Who really cares? You had people. You mentioned that people are, you know, looking at the leader and they're, you know, like all this love and affirmation and, and they praise him and all this and fall over the. People do that to leadership here. <laughs> I mean, have you not seen the news and some of the things here that has went on? People do the exact same thing here. And the difference is, is that maybe the people in North Korea may not believe all that stuff. And maybe they're not really truly like, you know, praising the guy. They're just doing it for show. But here it ain't for show. <laughs> Again, I cannot honestly sit here and criticize a group of people. A lovely group of people. But I don't know. And, and do that. I can't. You know, there was when growing up, it was this whole thing of, you know, we shouldn't like the Russians because this, that, and the other. And really and truly, when you look down at it, it's the leadership, it's the government of the U.S. and all these other countries who really and truly have their own issues with each other. It's not the citizens. They're just told to play along. But to be honest with you, I've met one Rush, two Russian people in my life, some of the nicest, friendliest people. You know, you see uh, videos and stuff and typically just the average everyday person's not the problem. Like they're just trying to get by. You know what I mean? Like they're just trying to live. That's how it is across the whole planet. Most of the citizens are not obviously the problem. If we had no government whatsoever on the planet, it would be the best thing in the world. Because you can go wherever you want to. You can see different types of people. And most of the time, everything would be cool. Because it's not the citizens. It's the governments that are the problem. It's all about, you know, who can, you know, force this person to this country to do what they want them to do. Or this country over here. It's just basically a bunch of gangs almost. So, yeah. Do I, do I think that the people there should be free? Yeah. Absolutely. Do I think that it's overblown sometimes the way that uh, North Korea is perceived? Yes, I do. I definitely do. You know, I'm watching a video here where, you know, these folks are from China and they're visiting North Korea and, you know, they're asking all these questions and this, that, and the other. And of course, Korea and China, North Korea and China are friends, uh, kind of, and, and all of this. But when you see all these videos, these documentaries, they're typically very similar. They have a person, a minder that walks them around and watching them and giving them tours and all this stuff. And, but the, the people who visit, the same questions keep coming up. They show people the exact same stuff, right? They show you the, the, they walk you down the main part of the city where they've built all the new stuff. 
uh, in Pyongyang. They don't take you technically to the countryside. They only keep you really in the city. If they do take you to a farm, it's a it's a prop farm, so to so to speak. It's just a it's all for show and tell. And you know, they take you to the library, which they said they have thirty million books, and you, they don't show you one book. You know what I mean? Like it, but who cares? Whether they have 30 million books or three books, who cares? They have a fake farm, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you look at North Korea, it's by far more advanced than some other places around the planet that I can point out that is super free, or much more freer, I should say. It's by far doing better than other places. People will say, well, that's because it's propped up by this and that. I agree. It's propped up by China and other places. I, I get that. But they're doing a little bit better than other places I've seen just in general. Now, maybe their freedoms obviously are not the same. I'll give you that. But as far as other things, yeah. Is it a place, would I want to live there? No. 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 I wouldn't. But do I think that we should get involved in, in what they're doing or trying to get them to believe the way that we do? No, I don't. I don't think that it's our business, honestly. I think that that is kind of the reason why we're, you know, you have some military leaders who are up at night because we're trying to make countries do what we want them to do. You can't have this, you can't do that. You can't have nuclear weapons, yet we have the, the largest amount <laughs> the amount of money we spend on our military, you could take most of the countries in the world and still they can't come close. So it, it's like, you know, we can't sit there and honestly tell other people what to do. And for example, you know, China, we're talking about global warming and I believe it does exist. We went through a massive heat wave. You know, we had freaking shellfish being cooked alive on the beach, right? Because it was so hot. So I agree with that. But we're trying to do climate change now, but we're a super, super wealthy country. And we're telling other countries, you need to cut out all of these different things. You need to do this and you need to do that. But back when we were going through our huge industrial period to get to where we are now in terms of things, we were polluting like not, I mean, Tacoma is a good example. Look how much pollution we dumped right there into the, to the bay. We dumped pollution, pumped that pollution all over the place to get to where we are. Now, when there's a developing country trying to do use cheap stuff to get to where their people can at least have a decent life, we're telling, nah, you can't do that. Yeah, we did it, but you can't. Yeah, we have nuclear weapons, but you can't. It just, it's stupid. It's stupid. Unless we're willing to pay for these people's lives, we don't have any, in my opinion, we should not tell them how to live. That's just like me going to my neighbor and saying, hey, you know what? You don't have a fence, so you need to get a fence because I have a fence. And, you know, you don't have two cars. You have four cars, and that's not fair because I only have two. And you should, it's, it's just stupid. It's it's dumb. Or I believe this because this is my religious beliefs. This is my political beliefs. Do you believe the same? And if you don't, then I don't know if we can be friends or not. It, it To me, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I think that we should mind our own business. I think that it's unfortunate that the people in North Korea and other places live under such circumstances that they do. It, it sucks. But... I don't think that we should stick our nose into it. And do I think that North and South Korea will ever merge together? Probably not. You know, South Korea is saying that North Korea needs to get on its level. Well, heck, there's hardly, there's not many countries that can be on South Korea's level when it comes to technology. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't even know Tacoma. Washington is not on most of South Korea's level. When it comes to even the United States, our transportation network, compare that to South Korea. 
<laughs> so if you're wanting North Korea to get to the same level of South Korea before they could ever consider it, it's not going to happen because they advanced so dang fast, so quick, so, so strong. Unless you pop Dubai and land it right there in North Korea, it's not going to be like South Korea. It's just not. Right? But I don't think you're ever going to have those two join back as one. Um, Noelle, will she visit? Uh, yes, we do want to vis visit South Korea. Um, she hasn't been back uh, since so she was adopted here and all of that. Um, we've talked about it. Uh, COVID and stuff like that has actually put a damper in a lot of our travels. But yeah, that's something that we definitely want to do. We're going to try to wait until Sweets gets a little bit older. Our youngest gets a little bit older. Um, Zeta is her real name. We call her Sweets. And then we'll probably go and venture uh, to South Korea, hopefully after everything is over with. But yeah, that's something that's on the agenda. So anyhow, be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Hope I answered all your questions. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.